Thanks for dropping in. Printy Panels are back for another video. You will now have even more options when designing your 3D printed modular shelves. Now we have a lot of updates to cover, so let's get to it. First up is angled panels. These triangular panels can be used to create corner shelves or act as structural support. They come in every standard unit size, starting at 2x2 and going all the way up to 8x8. I also created some double panels. They're basically two angled panels with a shared side. These are a really good option if you're making floating shelves. The next update was a very popular request. These are magnetic connectors. You can use them to attach panels to metal surfaces or to each other. The connectors are available in small, wide, corner, and latched layouts. While testing the design, I found scenarios where the connectors needed to extend beyond the panel's edge, like when connecting two adjacent cubes. For these situations, I created taller variants of the standard connectors. Print whatever size works for the constructions you have in mind. As usual, these models are designed for 6x3 millimeter magnets. So if you have spare magnets from any of my older designs, those will work just fine. Or if you prefer to use a different magnet size, the project includes step files for easier customization to support whatever size you have. Next up, hinges. These flexible panels can be used to create doors, lids, or other designs that break from a rigid grid. You can use them with angled panels to create supported sloped shelves, or use them with magnet connectors to create containers like this pencil holder. Hinge panels can be extended into longer flexible chains. Why would you want that? Um, I don't really know, but I think it's pretty neat. In addition to coming in a range of sizes, hinge panels are available in two print options, print in place, which requires no hardware, or wired, which needs a little post print assembly. The wired option, as the name suggests, is held together with hanging wire and is by far the stronger of the two. For these prints, I use 24 gauge steel wire that's about half a millimeter. If you're building something that doesn't need to bear much weight, like a swinging door, the print in place option will work just fine. Just make sure that your printer is well tuned, otherwise it will come out completely fused. Last year, I created this tea holder with a sliding timbre door. Well, our final update brings that mechanism to printy panels. It all comes down to two simple pieces, the clip on track and a flexible shutter. Just clip in two tracks, slide in the shutter, and then seal everything up with a window panel. And here are a few fully assembled boxes that I've already completed. The shutters range from 4x4 to 8x8, so most of the standard sizes are covered. Really, Anything smaller than this looks a bit silly. To make printy panels quicker to print, the project was designed with thick 0.3 millimeter layer heights in mind. But these shutters are a rare exception to that rule. For a shutter that's both strong but flexible, stick to smaller 0.2 millimeter layer heights. This will give you two solid layers of crisscrossing line paths before the rib texture kicks in. This is also the best spot to pause your print if you want a nice color swap. Once again, I find myself completely surrounded with example prints. So that's going to be all the printy panel updates for now. I still have quite a few remix ideas that I haven't even touched, but three videos in a row on the same subject? Well, that's a little too focused for my brain. So keep those suggestions rolling in, and I'll revisit this project sometime in the future. Well, until next time, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. So I can totally scrap any of these prints. As if you needed any more evidence that nature and cats abhor a vacuum, Zelda has found the one empty spot left on the table.